we bring our symposium to a close by having a concluding discussion with the extraordinary members of the Buxbaum Institute Advisory Board. Um, to, today, let, let, me, um, let, let me introduce briefly uh, Dr. Jordan Cohen, who's president emeritus of the Association of American Medical Colleges, the AAMC. Also, Jordy is the chair emeritus of the Arnold P. Gold Foundation. Previously, uh, Dr. Cohen had worked and taught at many universities, was the dean of the medical school at the state of New York uh, Medical School at Stony Brook. Um, he's a member of the National Academy of Medicine, the former chair of the American Board of Internal Medicine, and the vice chair of the Board of Regents of the American College of Physicians. It's wonderful to welcome Jordan uh, to our program. Uh, Holly Humphrey, Holly, are you, are you with us, dear? Yes, I am. Oh, good, good. Is president of the Josiah Macy Jr. Foundation. Um, she also serves as chair of the board of directors of the Kaiser Permanente School of Medicine. And prior to joining the Josiah Macy Foundation, Dr. Humphrey had been the dean of medical education here at the Pritzker School of Medicine for about 15 or 16 years, from 2003 to 2018. Um, she's a national leader in medical education. She's held major leadership positions, such as chair of both of the American Board of Internal Medicine and the American Board of the Internal Medicine Foundation. Ooh, we're so proud um, that Dr. Humphrey is a graduate of the University of Chicago School of Medicine and that she completed her residency and fellowship training here at the university. Um, then Laura Roberts, um, who was a medical student here at the University of Chicago um, and now serves as chair and the Catherine Dexter McCormick and Stanley McCormick professor in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at Stanford University. Um, Laura is an internationally recognized scholar in bioethics psychiatry, medicine, and is identified as the foremost psychiatric ethicist in the United States. Dr. Roberts has performed a series of studies on the ethics of research and clinical care in the context of serious mental illness. Um, Dr. Roberts has received numerous awards for leadership teaching in science, um, and is in the last few years has become the editor in chief of the great journal, Academic Medicine. Uh, Arthur Rubenstein, um, who had been dean here at the University of Chicago for 15 years before becoming dean um, at, at University of Pennsylvania Medical School, um, was, uh, was called away this afternoon and is not able to be with us. Uh, we're very sad that Arthur will, 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 not, will not join us. But I'm, I'm going to turn over the discussion um, to Jordi and to Holly and to Laura and let you offer comments um, about um, the, the presentations and, and the session, please. Well, let me begin. Uh, first of all, uh, Mark, thank you very much for that generous introduction. Uh, I think I've been privileged to be at virtually all of the annual uh, Buxbaum Symposia. And without exception, they demonstrated the breadth and depth of the quality of the work that the Buxbaum Institute has stimulated. So it's just a, a, a distinct pleasure and privilege to be associated with this, uh, with this uh, institute. So I thank you for that. Uh, I wanted to, I was particularly struck uh, in listening to Monica Peake's presentation about, about this issue that, you know, the, the, the COVID pandemic has been an unmitigated disaster. I think everybody recognizes that. But I think we have to also acknowledge that there are some silver linings that we could at least uh, tease out, one of which is has drawn attention to the longstanding issue of physician burnout and other healthcare professional burnout, as we've just seen. It certainly has drawn attention to the efficacy of telemedicine, which has been now a, a permanent uh, a sort of fixture of the future of medicine. But more importantly, as, as Monica pointed out, it is demonstrated so dramatically the disparities, the healthcare disparities, the racial disparities that exist uh, in our society. And uh, there's two aspects of that, which I think are a silver lining. First of all, 
it has raised the awareness and the and the depth of understanding about these uh, racial disparities. And I think there's a much broader recognition uh, of, of this issue and, and some very creative ideas about how we can address it. But it, uh, it's also, I think, clearly demonstrated what we need to do in medicine to address some of the issues. And Monica's presentation outlined a lot of those issues. But on a broader scale, I think it is also, I think, uh, I hope, has raised the possibility that we're going to address this issue more generally. It obviously affects much more than medicine, uh, but it is something that I think the healthcare system can take leadership in trying to chart some ways uh, out, of, out of this dilemma. Unfortunately, and this is a final thing I'll say, is that I think in, in the process of raising people's awareness of this issue, it's also elicited a backlash of uh, critical race theory being put under the microscope and being being viewed as something antithetical to the democratic uh, process. And I think we have to be mindful of the fact that there are still very large segments of our population that are resistant to doing the kind of things that are necessary in order to eradicate uh, the vestiges of systemic uh, racism. So those are some thoughts that were triggered uh, by this very excellent symposium. And I thank you again for uh, letting me participate. Thank you so much, Dr. Cohen. Thank you. Holly, do you, do you, would you like to? Uh, sure. Um, let me just underline um, what Jordan Cohen has already um, said, and that is this was a spectacular symposium. Um, um, I couldn't leave my chair. Um, it brought out not only the cutting edge issues um, in medicine and healthcare today, but also, as Jordan mentioned, the, the real revelatory issues related to the COVID-19 pandemic. And it was done beautifully, very much in the University of Chicago way. And what I mean by that is um, an abundance of rich ideas communicated by a very diverse group of faculty and of course, um, even a student. And it would not be a University of Chicago Bucksbaum Symposium without hearing um, student voices along with uh, the faculty voices. Um, the other observation um, that I have is, is where we ended today. And that is um, that, you know, in addition to hearing the incredible work that's being done related to COPD and um, who's your person um, with that spectacular video, um, we ended with a really serious and important topic about burnout and those um, rates of burnout that um, Wei Wei Li just shared are, are really stunning. And I would um, obviously hope that as, as the University of Chicago tries to address that, that you really try to take advantage of some of the core strengths that have always been a part of um, your culture, and that is, um, you know, your traditions and um, the ways in which you do have a lot to be proud of, um, as well as some of the things that have historically not worked, and that is the inefficiencies in really trying to provide the kind of exemplary care that everyone who works there, I know, is really engaged in doing, and yet there are incredible roadblocks. So I just, um, Wish you the best with that. And as you um, think about all those things that you can have a lot of pride in, I wanna circle back to where we started um, in this symposium and that is with Monica Peake. And um, given the way in which the country has struggled with COVID-19 and vaccine distribution and allocation of ICU beds and all those kinds of things, we heard at the beginning of the day today in our board meeting from your leader, um, Ken Polanski, that um, things had actually, by and large, been uh, managed very well. But that was very powerfully reinforced when Monica Peake, who has spent her career dealing with healthcare disparities, could echo the very same sentiment, that um, as an institution, you were able to manage um, an unbelievable situation with the allocation of vaccines when they became available and the allocation of ICU beds and the ways in which you took care of not only um, the patients who presented, but the ways in which you took care of your community really um, is exemplary. And then the final point I wanna make is um, 
I have spent the last many months really thinking about training the next generation of physicians and nurses who themselves have had their whole life impacted by those same structural barriers that lead to healthcare disparities. And I'd like you to help me think about the fact that those same structural barriers, lack of access to education, um, food, transportation, et cetera, impact some of the very people who are your colleagues and your students um, every single day. And as much as I thought I understood all this when I was the Dean for Medical Education um, for that 15 year period, I have many new observations and insights about the ways in which those same structural barriers really undermine individuals who wish to become physicians and nurses themselves. So I hope on another occasion, we may be able to take a deeper dive into that conversation. Lovely. Thank you so much, Holly, thank you. Laura. Thank you. Well, I'll emphasize a few of the points, but I agree with all that's been said. And I think um, anyone who's been at the University of Chicago feels so proud to be a Chicagoan and an alum of University of Chicago. And it shines through every time with these Bucksbaum presentations, absolutely phenomenal. So I just wanna highlight a few points maybe that haven't come up. One is today was such a wonderful illustration of physician scientists, physician scholars who really look at issues in a very different way. They take the heart of the doctor-patient relationship, the challenges that are lived in the doctor-patient relationship and explore them for their clinical and health outcome meanings, as well as their policy implications. I thought today was a fantastic illustration of that. I thought we saw um, how evidence can be based in clinical insights that can be then built out into really rigorous scientific questions that can be studied very thoroughly and very thoughtfully with impact uh, beyond, far beyond the walls of a local institution. I thought today illustrated innovation and creativity that was just phenomenal, whether it's in teaching patients, sitting with patients, improving company communication with patients, or using videos to try and illustrate the human condition and the hardest issues that we face as human beings. I just thought it was absolutely inspiring. And um, the optimism I feel about telehealth and the work that's going on at University of Chicago to try and build best practices and optimal approaches that really help elevate the doctor-patient relationship and create a different kind of connection rather than greater separation and distance. But that was absolutely fantastic. I wanted to say also that we saw today a treatment of patients as holistically, as uh, individuals, as individuals with lived experience of illness, as situated within families and communities. But we also saw the same thing for physicians and health professionals as individuals with vulnerabilities and strengths, threats to their well-being, threats to their mental health, but also tremendous sources of purpose and fulfillment in the context of families, work-life balance, the institutions they serve, and the society and patients they serve. So this holistic view of both patients and the clinicians and the kind of the crucible of the doctor-patient relationship I thought was fantastic. And as a psychiatrist surrounded by internists, I just want to say all roads lead to psychiatry. I saw fabulous reflections of awareness of implicit bias, relation, relationships, communication, trust, these um, almost ineffable dimensions of human experience, but that transform the doctor-patient relationship, bring health and well-being. So I'm delighted to see that psychiatry quietly but absolutely is alive and well in our, in our thinking. And I do, I do believe in it. And uh, we did discuss in the board meeting this morning that greater attention to physician well-being um, and uh, the threat to physician well-being, the ways that institutions can help support resilience, purpose, fulfillment, um, and capacity building within the health professions and as Holly's emphasized, not just amongst physicians, but amongst nurses and all of our health professional colleagues upon whom we all depend, that it's really wonderful to see the University of Chicago adopt 
uh, lots of interventions like this FACET uh, uh, program or um, task force to try and look at best practices to help support the, the culture at University of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And we all look to the, to the lessons learned there. So really commendable work by the institution uh, as we've commented on. So thank you. And it's my privilege uh, to see all of you and to be part of this wonderful work. Thank you so much. Th th thank, thank you, Laura and Holly and Jordi uh, for your beautiful comments.